discussed in the tutorial yesterday, uh, cybernetics can be a place where science and art meet, and maybe craft as well, and so there's going to be uh, a lot of science and art today. We're going to start off with a particularly scientific uh, excursion uh, with our opening uh, invited speakers, and then even in our first, um, our first uh, pa paper panel after the coffee break. So many of you know um, that my journey down the rabbit hole of cybernetics, uh, starting in 2014, uh, began because I, I, as you know, as I teach uh, acting and directing here in the Department of Theatre and Film, and I became fascinated by uh, the ways that cybernetics seemed to be completely aligned with the principles of the Stanislavski system of acting to the degree that the two were so isomorphic that it revolutionized the way that I teach acting and directing and my own acting and directing as well. Um, and I remember during my deep dive, um, Reading Cybernetics of Cybernetics, the compendium uh, volume that uh, Stuart Umpleby was involved in uh, many years ago that came out of Heinz von Furster's classes at University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. And finding this just one page where there's a dialogue between a guy named William Powers and somebody else whose name I forgot, called Beyond Behaviorism. And it really fascinated me, and then I realized I hadn't seen Bill Powers' name around much after that. As I continued to explore, I stumbled upon the work of William Powers and perceptual control theory, which, as, the, as I began to discover it, had been developed largely during uh, time with the ASC. Uh, if you look at, at the first volume of his papers, Living Control Systems 1, every paper in that, in that volume was uh, originally uh, given at an ASC conference, and most of the second volume as well. And I became very curious about uh, PCT and its place or lack of place inside the cybernetic legacy, for lack of a better word, because I found that as I explored it, it gave me even more precise tools for what I was looking for in the way I approached acting through a cybernetic lens, and it took me an, an even other step and gave me even more fine-grained tools for the kinds of work that I was interested in doing. So, cut to a trip to Manchester. Uh, twice I've been visiting with Dr. Warren Mansell, who's going to be one of our first uh, speakers. Um, and I got really interested in knowing that the, the history between PCT and the cybernetics committee at large hasn't always been an easy one. I thought, well, if I'm going to host this conference and we're interested in interesting conversations, and if we're interested in, as the conference theme indicates, ways that we act in cybernetically, whatever that means, what are some of the embodied, uh, and uh, I know we try trying to avoid the word applied, but uh, enacted things that cybernetics allows us, for me, I find PCT and the fact that it's developed into a, an actual therapeutic method called the method of levels to be actually one of the most robust um, developments of a strand of cybernetics that I'd ever encountered. So we're taking a chance here and bringing these two groups back together for the first time in many years. So uh, Rick, you're going to be up first, yeah? Yeah. So 